Tastings. Welcome back to Tucked In Tuesday. Tonight, I would love to share with you this story. It's called If Kids Ran the World, and it's by Leo and Diane Dillon. What would you do if you ran the world? If kids ran the world, we would make it a kinder, better place. Maybe we'd run the world in a big tree house and everybody would be welcome. We'd take care of the most important things. We know people are hungry, so all over the world, everyone would have enough to eat. The food would taste delicious and it would make people healthy and strong. Kids who had extra food would help bring it to people who needed it. Everyone would have a safe place to live. Bad housing would be fixed and new housing wouldn't ruin the land or sea. No matter how sick people were, they would have the medicine they needed. If you were lonely in a hospital, kids would come visit you and let you play with pets. Somebody friendly would help you with a big smile. Everyone would laugh a lot more. Kids would have more picnics and games and funny books and movies. People would spend more time playing and less time worrying. No bullying would be allowed. You could climb trees or dress up and dance and sing just for fun. Kids could act very silly. All children would go to good schools where every teacher was nice and had lots of books and music and art. Classes would be exciting and fun. Schools would serve yummy meals and have great sports and big playgrounds. Kids would love school. People could wear any kind of clothes and no one would tease them. Children would, live, would all live with people who loved them. More forests would be planted and protected. All the beaches, pools, and parks would belong to everyone. There would be no clubs or places that kept some people out. Friendship, kindness, and generosity would be worth more than money. People would take care of the planet and animals and plants. Nobody would throw trash on the ground or in the ocean or make the air dirty. People would have religious freedom and nobody would punish them or call them names. Everyone would learn the happiness of being thankful. Even if they were busy people, would remember to stop and see the beauty of a sunset or a rainbow. All over the world, people would feel safe with one another. People would live in peace together. No more hate. Everybody would learn how to forgive. If kids ran the world, would these things be possible? Yes, we think so. Because kids know that everyone can learn to share. Kids know how to try to do their very best. And kids know that the most important thing in the world isn't money or being king or queen or pushing other people around. It's love, giving it, sharing it, showing it. And that's why if kids ran the world, 
we'd make it a wonderful place for everyone to live. Grown-ups, too. And that's the end of the story. There is a little note here that I'll share with you about what kids are doing now. Like our friends in this book all over the world, we are doing things to make our planet a kinder, gentler place. It may not be in the news, but every day we are making a difference. What are kids doing? We volunteer in lots of ways, large and small. Some of us join groups at school or religious organizations, or we volunteer through our communities. We gather food, books, toiletries, and clothing, donating them to shelters or any other place they're needed. If we have games or toys or sports equipment we don't use, we give them to someone who will. Many of us volunteer with our families. It's fun to help people build new houses or fix up broken ones so homeless people will have safe places to live. We may sing in a choir and share our songs at hospitals or teach reading and math to kids who need help at school. Bake sales, car washes, garage sales, babysitting, and dog walking are great ways to raise money. Or we might enjoy coming up with our own ideas or partnering with friends. A lemonade stand can earn money for people who need help after a tornado, a hurricane, a flood, a fire, or an earthquake. Some of us volunteer at nursing homes, reading to the elderly or handicapped or blind. Sharing books is so important. And so is supporting teachers and librarians. At animal shelters, we do chores and try to find homes for orphaned pets. We clean up trash at school, on our beaches, in our neighborhoods, and we recycle. We shovel snow, rake leaves, or mow the lawn of a neighbor who can't do it himself. And growing food and flowers in a community garden can be as rewarding and fun. In this book, we also talk about some of the ways we treat other people to make them feel good instead of bad. No bullying, being kind and generous, not saying hurtful things about our differences. We let people wear their own style of clothes and follow their own beliefs and we don't make fun of them. Being friendly and making others feel welcome is good for everyone. We might send a card to a person who is sad or sick or extend our friendship to the new kid at school. In our playground, everyone is included and everybody gets a turn at the slide and the swings. We try to laugh more and complain less. We smile. It's easy to be grateful for what we have, and we know how to share. Across the globe, we are making the world a better place. For birthdays and holidays, some of us give donations instead of store-bought gifts. Grandma's Christmas or Hanukkah present might be a $5 donation to a homeless shelter, a food bank, or a group that saves lives by providing clean water. Hundreds of worthy organizations are easy to find online or at the library. Yes, our planet has many problems. So many that addressing them may feel overwhelming and impossible. But even the smallest things we do make a difference. And as the old saying goes, how do you eat an elephant? The answer? one bite at a time. And so Mustangs, I invite you to think about how you can take a bite out of that elephant and make the world a better place. Sweet dreams. <laughs>